Hey guys, Josh here from Momentum Productions and today I'm going to bring an old tutorial back from the dead and we're going to go back to Steadicam operation. How to balance a Steadicam. That video that I did a few years ago did very well and in today's updated slash modern tutorial video about Steadicams, I'm going to be answering all of your questions that you've been asking me over the last couple years and we're going to go over the balancing part of the uh, steady cam so that way we can balance your units as fast as we can as efficiently as we can and we can get you shooting as fast as possible so let's go ahead and start off by grabbing our steady cam so by steady cam i'm referring to all general uh forms of camera stabilizers like the wieldy the lang the glide cam the glide gear the fly cam all of those units actually operate the same they're all based on the same kind of technology. We have X, Y, and Z axis uh, gimbal here. We're balancing this thing in 3D, the three dimensions, right? Pan, tilt, and roll. So uh, that's why we're talking about the X and Y and Z axis here. So first stops first, let me go ahead and put some weird settings on here. That way I unbalance it as much as possible. That way it's not on the last setting that I used when I had my camera balanced. So I'm just going to go ahead and move around the settings here and the knobs just to make sure that it's unbalanced. That way I can show you how I rebalance my camera. So this thing is pretty unbalanced right now. Um, so we have the sled with our weight system. We have the head assembly with our Giotto's MH624 quick release plate, which I strongly recommend when you're using a, a glide camera city cam. And we have a telescopic boom pole that adds extra leverage or what I like to call invisible weight to the system. So we're going to mess with all of those settings. And of course, I didn't mention this. You can actually move your gimbal up and down. That is if your unit allows for that uh, setting. So I'm going to start off by taking my MH624 quick release plate and mounting it on my camera. I'm going to be balancing um, Sony A7S with a Rokinon 14 millimeter lens. Here's the camera, here's the quick release plate. Let's go ahead and mount it on, very simple. All right, now that our quick release plate has been secured on our Sony a7S, let's go ahead and put it onto the stabilizer. Now what you have to understand is that when you're using a, a stabilizer like this, it is a huge time consumer in the beginning. But once you get your practice down, it becomes very, very simple. It is a trial and error process. There's no recommended weight I can give you for your camera because even the same cameras weigh differently with different lenses. So I can't give you a recommendation of how much weight I recommend using on your sled. So that is something you have to do with trial and error of which I'll show you in this video. So let's go ahead and start off by putting our camera onto the quick release plate. Okay, here it is. Tighten up the quick release plate so the camera is not moving anywhere. What I first like to do, I like to drop the telescopic post all the way down just to give us as much leverage as possible. And if your system allows it, I like to actually spread out these wings on the bottom. That way your stabilizer won't turn on its own. You'll have more control over it. So I like to keep these things uh, spread out. So once you do that, you're set. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start off with one weight on each side of the sled. Always start with one weight, then work your way up. All right, so let's see how the camera balances right now. Okay, it's a little, eh, not good enough. So we can, we can work with it. Now there are a few tests that we can do on the stabilizer to ensure that it is properly balanced. It's called the drop time test. This test is very, very important because it actually makes sure that you're Stabilizer is balanced properly. That way you won't have what I like to call the seasickness effect, where it feels like you're on a boat and you're rocking back and forth. You don't want that type of image. You want your camera to be as stable and as straight as possible. So let's check our drop time test. Now, what is the drop time test? Basically, you're starting at a horizontal point and you're letting go of the stabilizer and counting how many seconds it takes for the stabilizer to hit the vertical point. So let's go ahead and do that test right now. Ready? Drop in three, Two, one. Let's do it again. So count with me. Ready? Let go in three, two, one. One, one thousand, two, one thousand. 
Okay, so it's about two seconds. We want to hit the two and a half to three second mark. So what can we do? If the sled drops down faster than three or two and a half seconds, that means that there's way too much weight at the bottom. So before taking off the weight plates, we can actually drop the telescopic boom post and actually add less leverage. All right, let's try doing the drop time test again. Ready to let go in three, two, one, one, 1,000, two, 1,000. See, it didn't even hit the vertical position. That means that there's not enough weight. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more leverage. All right, let's try it again. Ready to drop in three, two, one, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three. Okay, that's about right. Now it's still wishy-washy. This was just a quick test to see how far we need to um, drop the telesco telescopic boom post and how much weight we need to add. So I feel like we have enough weight on the system. Now it's time to make our micro adjustments, meaning we have to adjust the sled, the gimbal, and possibly even the wings on the system, but that's on a very rare occasion. So let's go ahead and look at how the camera balances. Which way is it pointing, front or back? Front. That means that there's too much weight in the front of the camera. So what can we do to compensate for that? We can go ahead and loosen up the tensioners here and bring the camera back just a little bit. All right, tighten it back up and let's see which way the camera points again. Still forward. Okay, let's push the camera back just a little bit more. Okay, still pointing forward. Slightly still pointing forward. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on the other axis, side to side, okay? So let's see which way the camera is leaning towards. All right, so it's leaning towards my right side. So let's compensate for that by moving the whole head assembly to the left by using this knob. Again, it will be different on each system that you use. On my system, this knob is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it counterclockwise until my camera looks like it's straight. Also, if you have a bubble level, I recommend using the bubble level system to make sure that your camera is nice and straight. A little bit more. Good, make sure everything's nice and sturdy. My camera's leaning back just a little bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and push the camera forward just a tad. Let's see how well that looks. Very nice. So this is what a balanced stabilizer looks like. Again, you can make some micro adjustments and make sure that your tensioners remain tight while you're filming. That way, in case you bump into something, it will not loosen up uh, the, the system here. That way it won't go out of balance. Now I strongly recommend that you keep your camera straps off of the camera. Camera straps are loose and they can change the weight on different sides of the camera, throwing your camera off balance. And also, when you change lenses, be prepared to rebalance your system. Also, when you even change your battery, be prepared to rebalance your system. Any sort of weight that you add or take away will actually unbalance your system. So make sure that you know that and practice balancing. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the gimbal adjustment. Now, if you have a movable gimbal on your system, you can actually set it so you can shoot upside down. By doing that, I just drop the gimbal down just a little bit. The system will become top heavy and on its own, it will flip upside down. Now you'll be able to shoot low angle shots. All right, I also recommend when you're shooting to use both hands. One hand will be on the handle the other hand will be tapping the gimbal assembly very, very gently, just so you don't have any unwanted, unwanted movements. You can also test the stabilizer by doing these abrupt movements. Notice how my stabilizer stays straight? That means it's properly balanced. Perfect. Now it might lean to the right or to the left just, just because of momentum, but overall, it will stay straight.
perfect. So that is how you balance a Steadicam. Again, this is a trial and error process. Some cameras may require more weight on the sled. Some cameras may require less or the same weight as my system here. It all depends. No matter what camera you're using, no matter what system you're using, you are going to have different settings than I am. I'm just giving you a general tutorial on how to balance this thing. When I first got it, it took me five to six hours to balance. Now, it takes me about five minutes. And it can with you too. Just rewatch my tutorial as many times as it takes and you will be able to balance this thing like it's a piece of cake. Before I close out this video, you wanna make sure that you adjust your gimbal just by feel. You don't want your gimbal to be too high, otherwise your handle can bump in to the head assembly when you're doing low angle shots. Also, it will throw off your balance. So if you do the drop time test, one, too fast, less than two seconds. So you wanna find that sweet spot with the gimbal. Drop it down just a tad, and do the drop time test again. One 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000, three seconds, perfect, which is, I know now that that's the perfect position for my gimbal. Also, if you're gonna keep using the same setup, like the lens and the camera's gonna remain the same, I actually like taking a little marker and marking at which point the gimbal is sitting at. That way, if I ever need to change uh, to a B camera or another camera on the same system, on the same Steadicam, uh, I will always have my old settings marked. That way when I use my main camera, I can just go back to those original settings by looking at my marks. So I hope this tutorial has helped you. If you have any questions, email me at info at capturethemomentum.com or comment below in this video. Also, if you're a company and you would like me to review your products, please also email me at info at capturethemomentum.com. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends and I can't wait to see what you will create. All right guys, I'll talk to you soon, bye-bye.